So Razer sent in their USB 4 dock for us to review, and I ended up reorienting my entire desk around it. Docks mostly exist to make laptops more like desktops, though you can sometimes use a phone, a tablet, or another mobile device in place of a laptop. It, it'll transform that into what is effectively a desktop, minus of course the uh, more powerful hardware that you'd come to expect with a full-blown desktop PC. So with that all being said, here's a quick rundown of what Razer does with its USB 4 dock. This dock has five USB type A ports, three USB type C ports, a regular SD card slot and a micro one, a gigabit ethernet port, an HDMI port, display port, and a headphone jack. It also has its own dedicated charger and of course the USB 4.0 cable that hooks the dock up to a computer. Not all of the USB ports are the same. Three of the type A ports labeled as 11 and nine are just USB 2.0 connections, while port 10 is USB 3.2 Gen 1 and offers five gigabits per second bandwidth and port 4 is USB 3.2 Gen 2 and goes up to 10 gigabits. The two type C ports meanwhile are both 3.2 Gen 2 and also offer 20 watts of power delivery each which is intended for stuff like charging your phone. The dock also has a power button and Razer tried to tell me why it was really cool but honestly I never found it useful. I'm just not sure why you'd want to turn off the dock though I'm not going to complain that it's there. This is all in an aluminum chassis that's not particularly big but has a decent amount of weight to it which is what a dock needs so that it doesn't move around too much. We received the black colored model, but there's also the Mercury model that uses silver and white, which is going to look good alongside Apple products and other similarly themed devices. That's not quite as many ports as the typical desktop PC has at its disposal, but the quality of these ports is pretty high. Also, it's worth bearing in mind that all of these cables are being funneled through a single USB Type-C connection. At SI, we're more used to benchmarking CPUs and SSDs, but you can't really benchmark a dock. So when we first got it, I wasn't really sure what we'd do with it. But eventually I decided to just use it the way it's supposed to be used and tested out some of our devices on it. And I really wanted to commit to the dock lifestyle. So I took my desktop off of my desk and started prepping it for the Razer dock. This was not a very fun thing to do, but I've had to do worse things. At first, I didn't think there were enough ports for all of my peripherals, but it turns out that I don't use as many USB ports as I thought I did, the dock was able to fit my keyboard, mouse, headset, microphone, and the webcam that we use for filming with a couple of ports to spare. The end result wasn't super clean, but it did what it needed to do. All there was to do after this point was plug in a device and use it. However, I actually don't own any USB 4 laptops or desktops or whatnot. All the devices that I have just go up to USB 3.2. But thankfully, this wasn't a problem when I plugged my Flow X13 laptop into the dock. My monitors were both able to run at 1440p resolution with a 144Hz refresh rate right my keyboard work, my mouse work, my headset work, everything worked. I've actually never used my laptop plugged into my desktop peripherals like this before, and honestly, the experience wasn't very different. For comparison, my desktop has a 7900X CPU, a 4080 GPU, and 32 gigabytes of RAM, while the Flow X13 has a 7940HS CPU, integrated graphics, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. That means I was using a CPU with four less cores and a much lower clock speed, a vastly inferior GPU, and and just half the memory. Now I couldn't do stuff like play the latest or play games at full resolution or edit videos, but the Flow X13 is fast enough to do basically everything else I do. The transition was pretty much seamless since all of my peripherals were plugged in. And it probably goes without saying, but because the Razer dock only plugs into a single USB Type-C port on the laptop, it was easy to unplug it and use it on the go. Now I have one other mobile device that's compatible with the dock, my Steam Deck LCD. I still have Windows installed on it from when I was benchmarking it for the Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360 review, and I decided, well, why not try and plug it into the dock and see what happens? And to my surprise, it worked completely, and I don't mean that I just got an image. Both the monitors were able to run at 1440p and 144Hz like normal. Everything else also worked fine. I actually ended up using the setup for over a week because I was really interested in seeing if using a deck as a primary PC was feasible. Now, I won't say too much about my experience because we're making a separate video on that, but I will say that it technically works thanks to the Razer dock. After using the dock with my laptop and my Steam Deck, I realized that the dock would actually work pretty well for my desktop too. I decided the most convenient spot for the dock would be underneath my desktop with the SD card side facing out so that it fulfills a sort of front IO role. If I ever want to plug in more USB devices in the future, it'll be really easy because I have so many ports freed up now. The only port on my desktop that I'm actually using is the front USB Type-C port because that's where I plugged in the Razer dock. 
The only part of this that was problematic was the fact that the dock kept shifting around because it's just not heavy enough to stay in place if you have lots of cables plugged into it. I ended up using a command strip to keep it in place. Now originally I actually wanted to plug in the dock into the back of my desktop because there's a USB Type-C port that purports to support DisplayPort, but when I tried it, it would never feed the image through to my monitors. I don't know why that port doesn't work. Apparently, this is a known issue with the uh, Strix B650EI motherboard. Asus, I'm a little disappointed. Um, I think there might be something wrong with your motherboard. You might wanna check that out. Though this is still a pretty great setup, and honestly, this way might even be better because the dock isn't just useful for providing more ports. As a reviewer, this is going to make my job a lot easier. When it comes to reviewing PCs, one of the main obstacles is just finding a place for it to exist. Like, where am I gonna put it on my desk? There's almost no room. But now I can, I don't know, maybe put it under my desk if it's a desktop, and then just plug the dock into it, and then maybe remote in, or maybe I don't even need to remote in because it supports display port through a USB port. It's, it's a really good setup, especially for laptops and mini PCs. Worst case scenario with a desktop review, all I have to do is remove my desktop and that's only three ports that I have to worry about. The dock cable, an HDMI cable, and a display port cable. That's it, I'm done. Of course, Razer isn't the only company in the world making docks, so let's talk about pricing. Currently, the Razer USB 4 dock goes for $230, which is pretty expensive. In fact, in the market, it's harder to find a dock that's more expensive than that. That's more than twice the price of Razer's older USB Type-C dock with USB 3.2 support, which goes for $99 right now. However, the Type-C dock only has a single HDMI port, one USB Type-C port as opposed to two, and all of its USB Type-A ports run at mere USB 2.0 speeds. And perhaps most importantly, the USB 4.0 dock comes with a 180 watt charger, which justifiably pushes the price up a tad. For someone who really wants a desktop-like experience with their laptop, I would say that the USB 4 dock is worth it over the Type-C dock. Now, there's not a ton of other companies making USB 4 docks, but I was able to find two competitors for Razer. There's Dell's USB 4.0 dock. Well, it's a Thunderbolt 4 dock, but it's compatible with USB 4, as well as Anchor's Prime USB 4 dock. Now, I don't have either of these docks on hand, so I'm just gonna have to do a spec sheet comparison, but I think that'll be pretty fine because, well, we're just talking about USB docks. There's no need to test performance or whatnot. The Anchor Prime costs $250, $20 more than the Razer USB 4 dock. In the front, it's broadly similar to the USB 4 dock, but it swaps out the SD card slots for charging ports. And for people who don't really use SD cards, that's probably an upside. The back isn't too different either, but the USB 4 dock does offer an extra USB port. Additionally, Razer's dock has more power, 180 watts versus 160 watts. Meanwhile, Dell's Thunderbolt 4 dock is $245. There's only two USB ports in the front, which I find weird, but in the back there's three video ports, two USB Type-A ports, a Type-C port with DisplayPort support, and two Type-C ports with Thunderbolt 4. This dock has a 180 watt charger, just like the Razer dock. Except for the SD card slots, Dell's dock has basically everything Razer's dock has, plus an extra video connection or two, and faster USB ports. Now right out of the gate I'll say that the Anchor Prime probably isn't worth getting over either of these two other docks. Uh, it just has less ports. I mean, if you want extra charging ports, more power to you. If you want an upright dock, also more power to you. But overall in the value proposition, it's just not quite as good. It's really the Dell Thunderbolt 4 dock that Razer really has to contend with because for $15 more, you get more video ports and faster USB ports. It sounds like a win to me. But honestly, I'm not so sure that the Dell dock would really be all that more functional or usable. For starters, you would need a laptop or something with Thunderbolt 4 support in order to get the most out of it. And then for those Thunderbolt 4 ports on the dock, well, you would need to plug in another Thunderbolt 4 device into it. So maybe like an eGPU or an SSD thing. But at that point, then you're you're sharing bandwidth with other devices, including your high performance device that, well, you want a lot of bandwidth for it, but it's having to share. So I'm not so sure about that. That seems uh, that seems kind of weird to me. I don't know if I would do that personally. Also, I'm really not a fan of how the ports are laid out on Dell's dock. It, like most of them, almost all of them, in fact, are on the back side where like the video ports are and stuff. And on the front, you only have two ports, which doesn't really make a ton of sense to me. Uh, Razer has designed their dock a lot more intelligently where you have your SD card slots and your headphone jack 
and two USB Type-C ports and a USB Type-A port on what is functionally the front side of it. And then you have a bunch of USB Type-A and your two video ports on the back, as well as your ethernet, which, you know, that, that's the back. You, those are the things that you're probably not going to be disconnecting on a daily basis or even a weekly basis because those are your normal peripherals. I think Razer has done a much better job designing their dock in a much more let's say like it has better quality of life. That, that's what I'm trying to say. And after spending a couple weeks using the Razer USB 4 dock with my normal setup and other devices, yeah, I would say I'd probably rather have that than the Dell dock because I cannot imagine how much of a pain it would be. I don't even know how I would set this thing up. I don't think I could even use the Thunderbolt 4 dock from Dell. Uh, the same way that I'm using the Razer USB 4 dock. It would just not work. There's really only two reasons to use the Thunderbolt 4 dock from Dell over the Razer USB 4 dock, and that's for extra video support so they have more than two monitors, as well as for that Thunderbolt 4 support in case you really need it. The Razer USB 4 dock is pretty expensive, but when you consider that a premium high-end laptop easily goes for over $1,000, adding an extra $230 on top of that to transform your laptop into a desktop seems like a pretty decent deal to me, so I would say that the price is right on that. And for that reason, because the dock can pretty much transform your laptop into a desktop with few, if any, compromises, we give the USB 4 dock from Razer a thumbs up. Anyways, that's it for this review. If you liked our analysis and want to support us, then please like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get notified the next time we upload. If you want to go even further with your support, then please consider donating to our Patreon. It helps keep the lights on. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.